all electric energy on board by solar and wind and not used any fossil fuel for this trip. I would like to congratulate Greta for her incredible achievement. Very few people would have managed to do this. We are very proud of you. I also congratulate the other passengers. And I would like to say a big thank you to the Principality of Monaco, without which this boat and the team would not exist. And thus, we would not have been able to offer this trip. We are extremely relieved that this has all worked out exactly as planned. We wish you, Greta, all the best for your upcoming journey through North and South America. Well, all of this is very overwhelming and uh, the ground is still shaking for me. Uh, so, but I want to thank everyone so much, everyone who, who is here and uh, everyone who, who is involved in this climate fight because this is a fight across borders, across continents. And um, it's, it's, as you said, it is insane that a 16-year-old will have to cross the Atlantic Ocean to, to make a stand and to... And, uh, this, of course, is not something that I want everyone to do. Uh, uh, the trip was, it was very surprisingly good. Um, I did not feel seasick once. So that was... <laughs> and uh, I am very grateful for Team Malizia and everyone else who has been making this trip possible and uh, of course for everyone everyone else every activist who fight daily to to save the world basically but to keep the fossil fuels in the ground and to create a safe passage to i'm sorry my brain is not working correctly um <laughs> yeah. The climate and ecological crisis is a global crisis and the biggest crisis humanity has ever faced and if we don't manage to work together to cooperate and to to work together despite our differences then we will fail so we need to to stand together and support each other and uh, and to take action because Otherwise, it might be too late. So let's not wait any longer. Let's do it now, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so we've got time for some questions. So if you could uh, state who your question's for, and um, we will start. So, okay, gentleman at the back there. Uh, right now I'm going to first finish this press conference and then go, go back to the boat and get my stuff. And then I'm going to rest. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, on this Friday, I'm going to join uh, the school striking uh, young people uh, outside the UN, uh, which they have been doing for every Friday now for more than half a year. Yeah. 
yes, uh, even on a sailboat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I, I heard about the forest in the Amazon rainforest, the fires in the Amazon rainforest. So that's, yeah. And um, it is, of course, it's devastating, and I, it's so horrible, it's hard to imagine. I, so, I mean, we need to, I mean, this is a clear sign that we need to stop destroying nature, and we need, and our war against nature must end. And, uh, I mean, the Amazon is such a key to addressing the climate crisis and the ecological crisis. So that is incredibly important. We cannot understand how important it is. So, yeah. Lady at the back, lady at the back here. Yeah. Uh, it's strange, everyone always asks me about Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, my message for him is just listen to the science, and he obviously doesn't do that. So, I mean, I, as I always say to this question, if, if any, no one has been able to convince him about the climate crisis, the, the urgency, then why should I be able to do that? So I'm just going to to now focus on on spreading awareness and that people in general will start caring and realize how big of a crisis this is. I mean, of course, um, oil and gas has its ups and downs, and um, we need to to sort of realize the consequences from a bigger perspective of what it actually does when we use it the way we use it today. And uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure windmills doesn't cause cancer. <laughs> And um, was was the second question my message to the all the activists uh, to just keep going? And uh, I know it's it may, may seem impossible and hopeless sometimes, but it always does. So you just have to continue uh, because if you try hard enough and long enough, you will make a difference and if enough people stand together and fight for the right thing then anything can happen so I mean, of course, that is, it's a huge focus on me as an individual and um, maybe in a way that takes away from uh, the focus from the actual problem. And so, I mean, of course, I, I wish this was more not focused on me, but more as a whole. And um, yeah, so... Uh, but I mean, there's not much I can do about that. If I, if what I'm doing makes, it can make a difference, and it, if it can create attention for the climate crisis, then I'm going to use that opportunity to, to, to try to change things. Uh, in 
indeed. Um, um, I'm going to to relax for uh, some some days now, uh, and um, I won't I won't really celebrate this trip or anything. I will just be as normal because that is what I enjoy the most to not do anything <laughs> and to go go for walks and uh, eat fresh food not freeze dried and um, to be dry and to to clean <laughs> myself <laughs> Uh, I am definitely coming to Chile, uh, as it looks now, uh, and uh, I am going to try to get there, uh, of course, without flying. So there will be a lot of trains, buses, and uh, probably even sailing as well. Uh, I, I will figure that out uh, as time goes by. And uh, from COP25, I expect... I mean, that must be some kind of breaking point. This United Nations Climate Action Summit in September now and the COP25, these two have to be a tipping point. Um, and um, I think, I hope it will be, because it must. And uh, I and um, many people with me are going to try to do everything we can to make sure that the world leaders have all eyes on them during these conferences so that they cannot continue to ignore this. I was... Uh, how old I were when I first started uh, to become a climate activist, or uh, I first heard about, like, found out about this issue when I was maybe seven, eight, or nine years old, and then I, I realized that oh, this is actually very bad, and uh, I started to read about it more and more, and uh, when I became maybe eleven, I became depressed. Uh, and the climate crisis was a huge uh, cause of that and because I just felt that there, everything is hopeless and there's nothing we can do and no one is doing anything and but then I sort of got out of that depression by promising myself that I'm going to do everything I can to change things and uh, that is what I tried to do and uh, I started to go to marches and demonstrations and to join organizations and things like that. But um, I still thought things were too slow, um, that nothing was really changing. So I, I was desperate in a way, tried to do something, just anything. And then this idea of school striking came up. And then I thought, yeah, I might just as well try that and see if it works and if it doesn't then I will try something else and then I did it and then it became huge very quickly. I mean, what I say to to all leaders is that we have to take we have to take responsibility and see the bigger picture, and uh, and of course, different countries have different uh, what do you say? How do you say? Uh, different ways, or de they are depending on different things, and uh, and that of course we need to take into account that, and of course, uh, the aspect of equity, which is stated throughout the Paris Agreement, we also need to take into account that different countries are on different uh, developing levels, and uh, we need to make sure that everyone gets a just transition, uh, because 
and that's why yeah and <laughs> yeah I guess I mean, yes, burning fossil fuels, um, and uh, that of course creates more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and increases the the percentage of, of uh, s several greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, um, and um, so yeah, that is that is true. Maybe, and of course. That combined with deforestation and destruction of natural habitats, um, of course, they are not a good combination. Because, um, so yeah, yeah. Thank you. One, the thing I'm going to miss the most is to be disconnected from everything and everyone. <laughs> to not have contact with anyone and to, to just not have anything you have to do. And to just sit, for literally sit for hours and just stare at the ocean, n not doing anything. That was great. And then I'm going to miss that a lot. And of course to be in this wilderness the ocean and to see the beauty of it and that I'm also going to miss uh, peace f and quiet is the end of the press conference but we wanted to thank everyone for coming um, we will be going back down to the boat now and um, the PA and everything is going to be off so thank you all very much and well done Greta